a new large tropical cyclone is headed towards India and Sri Lanka. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 7th. So we now have a tropical storm in all likelihood in the Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal and it's packing winds now probably around 50 miles per hour. It's the 90th storm to form this year and it's code blue on Ticos. So this system moving west northwestwards, and that's our main feature tonight but in the Atlantic we are looking at a 50% chance of development for a non-tropical low that's located in the central Atlantic Ocean. Um, it's going to be gradually moving northeastwards and could make, uh, acquire tropical characteristics as it heads that way. Interesting stuff. Eastern Pacific, nothing here and it looks like the season is well and truly over. It certainly is officially and it's a whopping 159 days until hurricane season starts again. Uh, I don't know anyone who's actually counting down that apart from us but that's interesting nonetheless. 20% in the Western Pacific for this potential system that's starting to get a little bit more traction on the models. We've been watching it for a day or so, and it could be a long-term threat to the Philippines, particularly the eastern and northeastern parts. And in the Indian Ocean, we have this unnamed and undesignated tropical storm, so it's literally just labeled TS here. And it's going to gradually curve a little bit towards the northwest and end up close to Chennai as it makes landfall in a few days' time. We'll check the models shortly for the latest. Here's what satellite imagery looks like across the Atlantic right now, and you can see that big behemoth of a system there in the Atlantic Ocean in the open waters and a huge amount of dry air down into the southern side of it uh, the inflow there and extending all the way across the Caribbean Sea this system will be struggling a little bit for that at the beginning but will get better eventually Eastern Pacific uh, there's really very little going on here quite a lot of dry air interspersed with a few little areas of thunderstorms but really nothing exciting or likely to become anything anytime soon and let's check our area of interest in the Indian Ocean, <coughs> the main one, the tropical storm. And this is how it's been developing over the course of the last 24 hours or so. And you can see the rotation has really increased in the last few hours. And then the convective build uh, on the western and southern side hooking round there and starting to get that classic shrimp structure that we get in intensifying tropical cyclones. No doubt it is intensifying wind speed estimates up to around 50 miles per hour. And that may increase a little bit more later on on over the coming um, day or so before weakening starts to take hold. I'm not sure if that's due to wind shear or uh, dry air. I've not checked the charts, but I'm sure it'll be one of the two. And here's the Atlantic. Once again, you can see that system there bulking up. Uh, the center of it is still on the southern side of that uh, weak convection, but it is starting to get better pronounced. And who knows, it might be a late surprise. Western Pacific looks like this and you can quite easily make out towards the southern uh, part of the ocean there um, that big broad tropical disturbance which will eventually become maybe this new tropical cyclone by the time we get to the five day period which will eventually reach Samar and then off towards the north it will turn. So, but particularly Samar is what we're worried about right now for potential rainfall impact into the Bikol region. And in the Indian Ocean, quite clearly that system there taking up quite a lot of the Bay of Bengal. It's a large system. And in the southwest there, another little uh, pop-up system there as well with convection. Had a chance a little while back, uh, but now it's pretty much scrubbed from our books. In the Australian region, things looking fairly quiet down towards the Coral Sea. Uh, a weak front pushing through, uh, but generally not too much going on in this region at the moment. I'm sure that will be all change, maybe next month but we're still quite early in the southern hemisphere seasons. 
Back to the North Hemisphere and this is the Eastern Pacific once again. There's still decent sea surface temperatures, don't know what good that will do considering this basin is pretty much dead now. The Atlantic still has a warm pocket in the Caribbean Sea, 28 degrees plus and extending into the Southern Bahamas region uh, but the rest of the Atlantic is pretty much shut down. Um, in the Central Atlantic of course we've still got this system uh, and it could be you know one or two systems we might get in December of non-tropical origin that might just try and force it and become a system and this is the Indian Ocean uh, ramping down in sea surface temperatures particularly further west looking at the southern hemisphere there it's building as well 28 29 degrees Celsius Philippine Sea still healthy pushing 30 degrees in a few spots uh, off the coast of the Philippine Islands themselves 29 or 30 degrees Celsius and those temperatures drop off very quickly now as you head further north Australian region is visible there as well and it's over 30 degrees in some areas there off the Northern Territory. Uh, it is well above average still in the Western Pacific which could favour a late tropical cyclone. Eastern Pacific is pretty much below average all round. La Nina is still quite clear there though. The Atlantic is above average in the subtropical zones which might help that non-tropical system currently uh, so keep watching out for that. Oceanic heat content is really dropping out now so we're really not going to see any fully tropical systems I don't think in the Caribbean Sea that will gain momentum. Eastern Pacific hardly anything left in the Western Pacific it is dying down quite a bit there as well. Um, the oceanic heat content quite high still near the Philippines so you might see some something burst as it approaches the islands maybe. Just speculation at this point though. This is what the computer models are showing, the GFS at least, of an extremely large system there and it's clearly got a wind field, it's clearly got the circulation, reaches hurricane force later on, it will definitely be post tropical by then, but we're really watching the first few frames of this image where that system turns around and does a little loop and then it's gone by that point there before it even gets to the hurricane winds. Uh, so it's going to be a toss up here, it is 50% to see whether it does acquire subtropical or tropical characteristics. Western Pacific, here's this system that piles towards the Philippines in the later part of the run, day 3 to 5. There it is, cruising along the coast of Samar through towards Catanduanes and uh, the southern southeastern part of Luzon. And this could become a tropical cyclone that delivers quite a lot of rainfall to the area. Large amounts currently projected to get 350 millimeters in that whole region if that system does develop. If it doesn't, we'll still see some significant rainfall amounts in that area. And this is the current tropical storm in the Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka getting quite a lot of tropical storm force winds, a broad system moving up towards the eastern coast of India there. And it does actually die off just as it reaches landfall. Uh, so it's another one that GFS is throwing up that actually weakens a lot before it makes landfall. We already had that earlier in the year, I think, with Asani, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like it could be something quite similar to that at this rate. Uh, but you never know, take precautions now, this is an active tropical storm. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, the GFS wants this typhoon now to move north and northeastwards just for a little peak there off the coast of Luzon whilst the temperatures are still favourable and then it completely gets shredded as it enters those higher latitudes um, and what's left of it is splayed across into a frontal system over the open western Pacific waters. So a rather small system there, not much of the Philippine Islands would be affected if that comes to fruition. It wouldn't really affect Manila or Cebu, uh, so it would be an interesting one to see. And down in the southern hemisphere then the GFS wants a mid-range tropical cyclone to blow up in the sort of central southern Indian Ocean. Uh, I think it must be quite close to the 90 degree line but it is in the Australian region this system initially forms and there it is just about reaching hurricane strength winds there right at the end of uh, that loop. Uh, so that's uh, something to consider there as we get towards day 10 uh, but it only forms what's that the 15th 16th of December so we're really only looking at 10 days out. The season may be over but the Force 13 merch store is still open you can scan the barcode and take a look at what we have including our usual clothing items especially in this time of year our hoodies and whatnot and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts because that's still in fashion despite the Central Pacific trying once or twice in the last couple of weeks. 
Well then, this is the Silly Range, and this uh, really develops that Southern Hemisphere Cyclone. Really large there, and extremely powerful. Well, Category 3 probably on that GFS run, but let's not forget that is very late on in that model run. Pushing southwards by the end of that 16-day period, uh, it ends up down way towards the south and will eventually be turning post-tropical as it continues that way, if indeed any of that happens in the first place. Uh, but certainly, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, on this day around the world, it was December 7th, 2007, that we had Cyclone Daemon, which was passing uncomfortably close to the uh, Fiji Islands as a Category 3, roundabout peak as a high-end Category 3, actually, just to the north of the main Fiji Islands. It would eventually curve eastwards and then turn southwards. The only storm active on this day in 2007 there, and it was indeed in the Southern Pacific. Quite early to see something like that in the Fiji region, uh, but it does happen every so often. Um, it's been a while though, and there it is, 2007, that we had Damon. Meanwhile, this year, if we do get another Atlantic storm name, it will be named Owen if it's before the new year. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Seymour, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone, and that will roll over into the new year. We've had 90 storms so far, 92 is the average, so we're nearly there. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Pakar, and in the North Indian Ocean, we may be about to get Mandus. We probably should have it already, to be honest, uh, but there we are. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the next Australian name is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Cheniso, and in the South Pacific, we'll see Harley. That's all from us tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. <laughs>